this God man. Father, we, uh, we thank you. Uh, we give you praise. We give you glory. Uh, thank you for drawing us to this place tonight that we might be in your presence with others who are uh, on the journey of life. And on this journey of life, there's ups, downs, there's good days, bad days, there's challenges, there's moments of clarity and also moments of confusion um, and delirium even, God. <clears throat> and I think that just speaks to the human condition, that, that humanity disconnected from divinity ultimately will lead us to insanity. We can't figure out why. <laughs> why are we here? Why have we been wired in certain ways? Why do certain things happen um, to us, against us? Um, why, God? There's so many questions. But Father, we thank you that not only do you provide answers, but you ultimately are the answer. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as we look to your word tonight, may, may you communicate that in your own way to every heart in this place that uh, the questions will never go away, the, um, the way we think and the way we're wired will never be turned off. We are humans, we are in this world, we are not you. But Father, we are your children um, and we, like a good parent, you must help us to understand what life is about, that we would, uh, that we would make uh, great use of our lives, that we would grow up in this world and we would live in this world and um, actually live out the purposes that you, um, you intended for us. And so, Father, help us tonight um, as we search your word and what it means to follow you, the invisible God who calls people to follow him. What does that even look like for us to follow you, not knowing where you are in certain times? And is that your voice or is that my own voice? Questions, God, we speak um, in a way tonight that helps us um, lean in and get a glimpse of what it may look like to be uh, your children and being called in this world to follow you. So we give you praise and glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Uh, amen and thank God. Amen. So let's open up first of all to Luke chapter 5. We'll pick up for a second where we left off. So Luke chapter 5. Peek out a passage and then we'll kind of take a journey. himself 
for that purpose. Remember, there, his, he had a temptation. So let's just turn right quick. Go to um, go John chapter 4. We're going to come back. Or maybe it's not going to be John 4. I'm sorry, go, uh, go Matthew. Go Matthew. Matthew chapter 4. All right, so we're going to uh, look at Matthew chapter 4. We're starting at verse number 1. And here is Jesus after, we're going to actually back up a little bit. We're going to back up to chapter 3, uh, verse 13. Okay, and it will run into chapter 4. Now, if somebody wouldn't mind reading that for us. Chapter 3, starting at verse 13 of Matthew. Then Jesus came from Galilee. Galilee, yes. Galilee. Yep. To, <clears throat> to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Can you come to me? It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consents. So let's just stop for a second so we don't just lose that. So basically, here is Jesus, and from this point of vantage, we know Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Jesus is everything. John has inside information kind of on who Jesus is. He's not clueless. So Jesus comes to John and says, hey, John, I want you to baptize me. He's like, man, you need to be baptized with me. How am I going to baptize you? You are the one that we get baptized into. And Jesus' response is, for right now, this is necessary because, listen, I didn't come to get rid of the law or the requirements. I came to fulfill them. Let me ask you a question. Why did Jesus come to fulfill all of the commands? Like, why is he saying, no, I got to go through everything that y'all got to go through? Why do I, I'm, I'm going to get baptized too? Why? Because he was our model, like you stated earlier. He was our model. Mm -hmm. So he was our model. Any other reasons that you think? Why did Jesus say, no, I'm going to go through every, everything y'all supposed to do, I'm going to do it as well. Why did he? He knew we wouldn't be able to. He knew we wouldn't be able to. Amen. Um, and I think that, that's part of what baptism will say to us. And we'll speak more about that. But I think you was going to say something. Didn't he go through oh, it so it would be put in the book? So to be put in the book, because it, it is written. It is written because he does speak to that, so it is. So like she said, like the model, because like, he, he came down here to be like all of us. Yeah. So it's like he had to go through something that all of us had to go through. Yeah, yeah. Like just because he's the Messiah, it's like he's still a human too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, and that's the strangeness of Jesus. He is 100% God, like he is. Like it was all God that came into the womb of Mary and it's like God steps on the scene in his world in this broken condition and he says, listen to this, because what I want to be to you or for you is a faithful high priest. Really the gospel is a message of substitution, right? Christ says I'm gonna fully stand in your place. Listen to this, both to do everything you're supposed to do and like you said, Brother Q, you ain't gonna be able to do it all. And I'm also going to stand in your place for the stuff that you didn't do that you deserve to be punished for. I'm going to stand in that place to take the punishment. So therefore, I've accomplished the do's and the don'ts. So now for when you put your faith in me, it ain't nothing left for you to do in order to get right. Now what's going to happen is because I make you right now, that's a whole lot of stuff I want you to do and stop doing. But your relationship with me ain't based on your do's and don'ts because I did all of that up front. So that me and you can just be, I don't want to get the, get the rule book from between me and you. I just want heart relationship, me and you, based upon, listen to this, my love for you and my love is proven by I perfectly obeyed the Father. This is what Jesus says. I always do what pleases the Father. Me and you can't say that. <laughs> I try. I even attempt. I even got desires to please God all the time, but I can't pull it off. My mind gets to tripping sometimes. Before the actions even kick in, my mind had already been contrary. God was telling me the other day to give somebody uh, some money. I had 300 questions in about two seconds. <laughs> it just flashed through my mind. I was already in disagreement before I ever touched my pockets. And so God can't do, God is free with his stuff. 
But because there's a lack of trust on our side sometimes, we get the question and wondering and fretting and, and God like, nah, just walk with me. And so I saw you. I think I might have to ask this question um, before, but uh -huh. so since so since you explained to us that God basically stepped in the role of the do's and the don'ts and right. there's no rule book, why is it that, you really can't answer this question, but why is it that so many preachers um, give us this, you know, the do's basically do's. give us this <laughs> rule book? Yeah. Um, That's right. And why is it so common? Yeah. Yes? Think about it, the natural economy of the human heart is to think we can earn our way. Remember what happened in the garden was disconnection from God, where I felt, you know, I gotta, like, it's on me. I'm in control, and so if I do this, I'm on a bargaining relationship with God. If I do this, he gotta do that. See, that's why that, that works good, especially in the urban or hurting environments. You be good. God will bless you with this. God will give you that. God will make you wealthy. God will. And so it's a lot of stuff that works from a religious perspective, and that helps to do as Do you think that it's their own interpretation of the Bible or not? It's, it's their misinterpretation. Okay. Okay. And just think about it partly, and I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, so I understand I can control you better if I put a lot of rules on you. I can, I can have you doing and don't do it. I can have you listen to this slaving for the church, at the church all night, all day, make you feel funny if you don't show up. But if I just leave you alone with God and say, man, I'm going to let the love of God grab you, and so if you do come, it's going to be because you love him. Amen. And now when you do come, I ain't got to make you do a whole bunch of stuff. You're ready to do something. Because you're in love with the one who is in love with you. Because this is what he says. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So just think, the message of the gospel is a message of God's love. Because remember, it says we love him. Because he first. Somebody got to explain to me how much he loved me. Somebody got to open up the book and tell me what he went through that he didn't have to go through to prove his love to me. And then that changes the dynamics of my heart. That helps me, listen to this, and it gets me back to where I stand. I want to please you. <laughs> I fall short though, but my desire, I mean, listen to this, but this is what I've learned in my journey at this point. Larry, fall down and struggle to do what I'm telling you to do. Don't fall down struggling to try to go do what you want to do. <laughs> get on this path, you don't fall down and struggle, you ain't going to be perfect in it, but I'd rather see you attempt this and keep getting back up and stay on this path, because that is what chords of love do. I said this before, and some of y'all probably haven't seen it. Some of you, uh, the, the Holly Berry, what's the book? Yeah, yeah. They love it. Watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's the book? The Boomerang. Oh, yeah. And he went to talking love. You know what love is? He said, well, love should have brought you home last night. You wouldn't have been over there with so-and-so and so-and-so if you really. So this is what Jesus says. Listen, I want the message of my great love for you to be exposed to you so that your heart gets enraptured and inflamed in love. Okay, so hold on, hold on, play your hand. Go to, and we don't go here much, but go to Song of Solomon, right? Yeah, Song of Solomon, yeah, I know, just the mention of love. Like, where is that? Yeah. So it's at the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Song of Solomon. So it's right after Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, right after Psalms. Yeah, Song of Solomon. So, so, Song of Solomon. Okay. Yeah, Song of Solomon. So, so this is really um, in one picture, husband and bride. But we do know that the church is the bride of Christ. This is really speaking of Christ and his bride. This is a love affair that God has started on his side and it has picked up on our side. Um, just think, this is old school version of what courtship looks like. It's, it's the man who pursues, it's the man who looks for, it's the man who searches for. The Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. That means the wife needs to be, or the woman needs to be somewhere being what she's supposed to be so she can get seen and found. Right? She ain't supposed to be chasing and pursuing. <laughs> She's supposed to get pursued. And just think, that is the message of the gospel. I ain't chasing Christ. I wasn't looking for him. What thinking about him? He came after me. And listen to this. When I had all these other love affairs, yeah, yeah, yeah. he came and arrested my heart and captured my heart to make me say, bye bye, y'all. I'm going with him. Because see, that's shady love. I've been trying to work and earn that love. I've got to do a lot to keep that love. You ain't never satisfied. And I'm trying to 
about to make it happen. That love is, is a lot of work. But this love has already been worked out. This love is just, it's, look, it's drawing me in. I'm, I'm just getting drugs. I'm getting this core just grabbed into it because his love has a wooing factor to it. When you behold it by the Spirit. See, I should hear about Jesus. He didn't do nothing. Grandma, Jesus, Jesus, church all day. I didn't understand what the jumping, the running, the shot. I y'all, y'all doing a lot. But when it opened up for me in a personal way, it changed. I understood. It'll make you want to do some stuff sometimes. I understood that. So, so let's get Song of Solomon right quick. So chapter two. Yeah, Song of Solomon. Yeah, that's CBC. And so here's a challenge right here. Some people don't preach this kind of stuff. We don't even know how to find it. <laughs> so it's the book of Psalms, the Proverbs, the Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Short book, but love, love story. We're going to start chapter 2. Look at uh, <clears throat> verse 1. So it's, it's kind of difficult in one sense because you don't know who's talking <laughs> at one time. And I just think, I'm going to just say this, that's beautiful. Yes. This is how, how clear the love is. You don't know if he's saying it or she's saying it, but you do know they in love. <laughs> Listen to the conversation. They say in verse number one, I am the rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. I'm going to stop for one second. <clears throat> this is what Jesus says. He says, I am the rose of all roses. I am that, listen to this, I am that lily that grows, and lilies have a, a beauty to them, but they don't grow in valleys. Listen, mm -hmm. Jesus is the one who rises up out of a place that's unexpected. Yes, I, I wasn't thinking that Jesus was going to be the hope of the answer to joy. I was looking for joy, happiness everywhere else but him, but out of this distinct place of church and because in my mind, church was something else. I had put it in a box, in a category, and God was tucked off over there. And again, I said y'all before a lot of times that Jesus was when you get ready to die. So he was in a safe box. Until I get old, you're not coming out of that box right now. I'm going to do me right now. But out of that box rose the happiness I was looking for, the joy, the contentment. The reason why I'm even here, the identity that I was looking for were trying to create on my own was in that box. I tucked him off, pushed him in the closet, on the corner, put him in a safe closet, locked it, and threw the key way somewhere where I couldn't find it until I needed an emergency. But listen to this, he broke him out of that box. Listen to this, and pursued me with cords of love. So he says, I am the rose of Sharon, a lily of the valley, a lily that grows in a place where it should not be able to grow. And it says, as a lily among brambles. Just think about what is a bramble? Your version may say something different. Thorns. thorns. I just think the thorns will prevent the lily from breaking through. But he says, this is who I am. I will break through whatever is trying to contain me and keep me from you. This is what his love looks like. You just think about death, the cross. That was a thorny place. But I came through that and broke out on the other side and now I'm calling you to myself so that the love that you need to even, like, to even be able to face tomorrow, right? Like, you need this to keep walking this journey where, listen, we all are headed towards the grave. That is by itself enough to make a cat want to turn around and run back if I could. I don't want that day to come. But, but the truth he has given makes that day not what it once was. When, when the truth is revealed, when my eyes have been opened to the truth, so he, he has broken through the thorns, and it says, so is my love among the young women. And so again, remember, he's speaking metaphor of the church. So is my love. My love is something that breaks through the difficult places of life. Sometimes, as we take our journey, mm -hmm. you see God more clearer in the yes. difficulties of life. Mm -hmm. When you go through the thorny situations of your own journey, mm -hmm. that's when he get real. That's when, listen to this, that's when oh. the prayers get real too. <laughs> <laughs> you won't pray until you go through something. And listen to this, they'll pray, you know, sometimes when you, you're feeling good or you, you, know, you ain't got a lot of issues and needs, you'll pray a lot of good words, a lot of long words, you'll do a lot of stuff, you'll pray for four or five minutes. But when you get real and you really, that prayer might be short. Help. 
<laughs> you don't know where it is, because listen to this. It's not play or pretend. Yes. It's not shadowy or flowery. And that's what, as your question was about, religion does. See, religion spend a lot of time on a lot of words, a lot of information, a lot of thoughts, a lot of theories, but it ain't got personal yet. When it's personal, see, when, when, when you are trying to describe something that you, uh, you ain't really sure about, you ain't never been there. If I'm trying to tell you how to get somewhere and I ain't never been there, I gotta use a lot of language to try to explain. But when I've been there, just take two left, turn right, and you'll be right there. <laughs> see, when you've tasted it, you don't have to, you don't need flowery speech. Yo, yo, the way your eyes look, say, he knows something. You ain't even said nothing two phrases, but the way you looking about it is like something, I don't know. I don't even know if God is real, but it looked like he knows something about God. And so this is what God wants to do, is that I want us to get in contact. That's why I came down. I didn't come down. That's why he was, remember, he had a problem with the church. He had a problem with cats who was all about religion, do and don't. They were still on that. He said, listen, I'm the fulfillment of all that. All of that ceases when I step in. And you feel good about yourself, hold on a second. You feel good about yourself because, again, as a preacher, with you holding these rules, you seem real important. Mm -hmm. It seems like you know a whole bunch of stuff that they don't get to know, and really, I want them to know me. And this was one of the challenges that they wouldn't let regular people just read the Bible for themselves. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, he said, when I come and the Spirit comes, listen, everybody's going to know. Amen. It's going to be plain as day. Thank you, God. And so this is one of the things where no person who serves or works for God has a hold on God that you can't have. Mm -hmm. The relationship is supposed to be personal to him. When we get up in here and in church, we're supposed to be able to nod and be like, yes, brother, I believe that. Amen. Like, not just because you said it, I've experienced that. Okay. That Jesus has been walking with me and has confirmed his word. And so what this becomes, as we said many times, is a huddle. We on the huddle, we in the huddle, finna go out and, and live the life that we've been called to live and run a play, y'all know I'm a football person, so, but this is where we get together and we begin to think about what he said to us, what he wants from us. I know it's difficulties, but there's another team out there trying to stop us. But go out there and faith, brother, run your play. Don't let them stop you so that we can come out and now we come back to the huddle the next time, say, man, it worked. Jesus was with me on that plate, man. The door is just opening. And that is when the church comes alive. Experiential, not keep coming back to rules. In uh, line 7.2 and issue 712, like, man, don't all that out the way. What is Jesus saying to you as this living word? And so he brings us to this place that we might know him in an intimate way. Look at verse number three. And I forgot who was reading it. Was I reading it? Yeah. I was reading Okay. So as an apple tree among the trees of the forest, so is my beloved among the young men. Now just think about it for a second. Apple trees don't grow in the forest. He's still talking about the rarity of this love. It is in places that you wouldn't expect it to be. He said, this is what it's like. And just think, especially if you get hungry and lost in the forest, it's something you can eat when you get trapped off in there. He says, it's like an apple tree. She is trying to describe what his love is like in an intimate way. It is something that shows up when you least expect it. It's something that is present in places that you would not even imagine it to be. He goes on and says this, with great delight, I sat in his shadow and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Amen. See, you know what that is? That's taste and see. That, that the Lord is good. She said that I was on my journey. Just think about it. The first passage talks about I've been traveling on my journey, and my journey has taken me into some valleys. Yes. And down in the valley, I saw a rare thing. There was a lily right down in the valley. I've been on a journey, and then sometimes in my life, I've been through some forest places where I felt lost. Yes. But listen, there was a tree that had fruit on it that I could enjoy in the midst of my lostness. And she said, listen, you know what I did? I sat down under the tree's shadow. To let me get a listen to what the tree provides, a little bit of refreshment, a little bit of shade from the heat that's out here, from my wandering, a place of somewhere I could lean on and rest and enjoy the fruit that's been provided. And look what it says. It says, uh, with great delight, I sat in his shadow. You just, just hear this. Some people um, begrudgingly come to church thinking they're doing God a favor. 
you know, to, to you know, oh, I got, you know, I gotta go, I, I gotta go to church. Like I was just saying today, we just looking at what my day was like. Like, man, after this, I was in the steam room. Like, after this, I get to go preach the gospel. Man. Like, well, my whole day has been. I didn't do a whole lot of stuff today, and then after this, not I have to go do this thing. To get. Yeah, the blessed yeah. privilege to stand up to a group of people yeah. and say, man, and I, I didn't know we was even going to Song of Solomon. Mm. But I get the privilege of God being able to say, listen, Mary, just be faithful and watch what we, watch what happens. Just think, I think that's what it's like to be in relationship with God. You don't have it all figured out. Yeah, Your days you, ain't all planned. Thank you, God. You're just on the journey through some valleys. In the midst of some force, but you find some fruit that's made available, and you get delighted to be in his presence. The Bible says this, that in his presence, there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand, pleasure forevermore. Have you found that to be true? Yeah. To, to, to where there, Can you say that one more time? In his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, pleasure forevermore. So let me just, let me take you to that scripture, because I'd love for you to see it yourself. So go to Psalm. Hold your place, though, because you might not be able to find Psalm of Solomon. <laughs> Again, so Psalm, uh, go to Psalm 1, I want to say it's 116. And then as I traveled, I had to start asking, you know what? 
I don't even know what to do. You need to guide me. I'm, I'm stuck. So then as he started making things known to me, I'm like, oh, that's why you sent me through this. That's why that happened to me this. So I didn't look at it in a negative way. I took all those things and put it in proper perspective. Now I'm able to see in a whole different ramp on a whole different level, and my life has never been the same, because first of all, I already know now that it's not about me, because what I was doing, yeah. I was already there, yeah. and I already, I, I asked for help, Thank you, Jesus. and when I asked for help, and when you start downloading and talking to me personally, yeah. then I'm like, okay, yeah. you real, this ain't no joke, yeah. Yeah. and then there's many things in my life that he just stepped in and do, I'm like, oh, you real, yeah. Yeah. so each time he's done it, I didn't say, oh, what's the point, so this is, no, I've learned, and it says in here, you got to say that, no, you did it, Lord. And don't let nobody else say, oh, to you. No, because it builds your faith up when you do that. And it's like, no, no, no. I know he's done this. Because the things that, that I, there's no way. There's no way. So making it known to me and being personal, I am so, you have to excuse me, freaking grateful. Freaking grateful that he took out the time to do this for me. I'm, it's a, it's, uh, I pray and I wish and I hope yeah. that people can feel and see what I'm talking about and people ask you, why you praise them like you do? I'm, he's made stuff known to me. It's not a joke for me no more. <laughs> and I know that I gotta do this. And as I said to you, I'm coming, my soul, my soul is thirsty. I don't need this other stuff. I need my soul to be fed because there's a place I got to go. There's things I got to do. And I don't have time to waste no more. Not time to waste with me. Because I know I can make myself waste time. And I don't want to do that no more. I'm like, okay, I got it. We all got our trouble. We all got I'm not perfect. But in it, he is giving me that shade to go under that tree and eat that apple and say, Lord, I thank you. You are my rest. And right here, man, give me the key to keep this journey going because I need you. Yeah. I can't make it without you. Now that I know what I know, and now that I know what I can take myself, man, scare me. I don't want to be with me no more. And this ain't no joke. It's like, Lord, okay, please, because I already know if you take your hands off of me, I'm already knowing what can happen and what I would be to my own demise. I don't want it anymore. And so it, it, it is it is it is God's goodness, right? That brings us to that place, right? It is his experienced goodness. It's not, listen to this, heard about goodness, right? This is no, I've tasted for myself in a personal, intimate way. And now I am able to listen to this. See that I don't want that. I do want more of that. See, he has to give us, listen to this. An appetite for himself. Thank you, Lord. He has to make us home. This was this. He who hungers and thirsts for righteousness yeah. will be filled. Yeah. But listen, yeah. you can't make yourself want God enough. <laughs> God got to do something to you internally to make you want him. Thank you. To where you're ready to set everything else aside so that you can get more of him. Or else TV a crowd in, conversations a crowd in, noise, drama, all you find anything else to do. But focus on him. Amen. I go to church on Sunday. Well, bro, it's Tuesday. Well, <laughs> you gonna wait till Sunday? <laughs> so this is this is what the pastor was gonna get to him, and he said, "Listen, you need this bread every day. Amen. Amen. Jesus. You can't live off. Listen, some of us have been living off fumes for too long. That's a scary ride oh, yeah. when you know that thing that already hit that light, yeah. and you on the highway, yeah. <laughs> and now they got traffic." Oh. Um, When I get hungry, I get confused. When I get hungry, I get that. You know, my wife is like, I don't need the what we talking about. I can't even talk about it right now. Like once I get something to eat, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. But right now, that hunger didn't kick in, and I got a, I got a made up mind. And so God says, you can't be like that about me. Many times, this is what we do: the hunger, pain, and thirst for intimacy with God kicks in. But we go to something else. Yeah. It's him poking at us to bring us. There's been 
a season of my journey where God was waking me up like 3, 4 in the morning. <laughs> and he was telling me, you too busy during the day, I can't talk to you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm waking you out of your sleep. So, you know, and listen to this, I remember I told y'all before, one night he woke me up and my immediate thing was, I turned to my phone and started looking at well, social stuff, Facebook, all of that. Before in the morning, ain't nobody talking to you right now. <laughs> before in the morning, man. But what God was saying, that didn't call you. I did. Oh, <laughs> that didn't wake you up. I woke you up. I wanted to talk to you. Oh, and so what we have to do is uh, we need God to help us you, be sensitive to his voice. See, this is, see, when you spend time with a person enough, you know that voice. They call, you don't even have to ask, say that, hey, what you want? I'll be on the enemy, blah, blah, blah. But if somebody you ain't talking about, you're all right. You, you get your professional voice on. If you don't know who it is, hello? Uh, who, who are you looking for? <laughs> you, 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 it's a, you suspect because you ain't sure. Is this somebody looking for? I'm going to leave that in awe. But when you know, you don't got to do all that. If you recognize the voice because we've been spending time together. So God is like, I want us to get on that kind of relationship yes. where we know the one another that when I knock, you, you let me in. So God wants to be intimate with us. So this passage, I just wanted to be reread one more time. Somebody else give me another version. We're still on 16 verse 11. But I also have a little mini testimony okay. about the Lord showing up. Amen. Uh, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So just think about this for one second. The right hand is a symbol of power and authority. So first of all, in your presence, if I get close to you, there's fullness of joy. Now just notice this for a second. Kings don't just let anybody walk up in their presence. You walk up in the king's presence unannounced, uninvited, your, your helmet is coming off immediately. The king didn't allow that. You had to be invited and they had to like you know, give you a nod or beckon you and then the people will let you come on up. So to be able to get into the king's presence mm -hmm. is a blessing. Yes. For you to be invited, because listen to this, Amen. we have been a people of high treason against the very king that's on that throne. Amen. We've been in his world, using his gifts, breathing his air, doing our own thing. And for that king to not listen to this, okay, we gotta see something. Amen. Hold, hold your plate. Go, go look. Luke chapter, um, Luke chapter, I want to say 18 right there. It might be 19. So let's see. So, yeah, so let's go to Luke chapter 19. Yeah, we'll read a couple of these verses. And I just want to get to the end conclusion. So here's just this example that Jesus begins to talk about. Because listen, he wants to display to people who he is. Like he wants them to know, listen, I am the king who's calling people into a kingdom. He says in verse number 11 is where I'm going to start. At. Verse number 11 says this. As they heard these things, he uh, proceeded to tell a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. So I want you to notice for a second, Jesus says, I first of all have to um, clarify your illusions about what Christianity, what the kingdom of God is. I don't want you to think, listen to this, that what I came to bring, says Jesus, is what you've already been experiencing. Amen. That right there, that religious system, I am not with that. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to tell this story, but i got to show you one more thing. Hold your place there. Go to Romans chapter 10. On that note, just Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. We're going to get verses 1 through 4 of Romans 10. I'm going to let everybody get there, and if you wouldn't mind, somebody read that for us, please, once you get there. Yeah, Romans chapter 10, we're going to go verses 1 through 4. Still see a couple pages coming up. Okay. 
Romans 10, verses 1 through 4. Why don't you go ahead? Brothers and sisters, my heart is desiring prayer to God for the Israelites that they may be saved. So stop for one second. He's talking about church folks. He's talking about people who grew up around the temple and offered pigeons, sacrifices, who know, listen to this, all the rules and regulations of religion. He said, I'm praying that they get saved. Think about this. You can go to church and not even know who God really is. That's right. You, you can be all around the things that talk about God and be, listen to this, far away from God. Remember Jesus himself said, there's a people who talk good with their lips, but their hearts are far from them. So he said, just because you go to church don't mean that you end with Jesus. Because remember, it was church people that got rid of him. Right. <laughs> it was the church people that said, enough of that. <laughs> this guy got to go. Listen to this. Remember, they was following him around, trying to catch him in something. Listen to this. They was trying to catch God <laughs> doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. Breaking his own rules. They was following him around to do that. Knowing that he's the one that got the whole destiny in his hands. So he says, I want them to be saved. I don't want them to just be religious. I want them to be saved. Let, uh, Thank go you, ahead Jesus. and you read. For I can testify about them that they are religious for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Stop for one second. Somebody else read that version, verse, verse 2 in your own version. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is, it is misdirected zeal. So, so just really your question earlier was talking about why do people keep talking about these dudes and don'ts? And they passionate about it, sweating up the storm, jumping and walking over pews and tables. <laughs> and they put all kind of stuff with zeal and excitement, but it's not based on knowledge, though. Right? Mm -hmm. They still, listen to this, they are still in the old covenant with it, in the old testament, which is types and shadows. Think mm -hmm. about this, the whole old testament was to be a pointer to only be fulfilled when Christ came. So they were taking the imagery, uh, which, for example, I'll just use this one picture. They were taking the offering of sacrifices mm -hmm. as the way you get right with God. Yeah, well, and remember, that was only instituted to be a picture of what it's going to look like when the Messiah comes, who will be the Lamb that will be offered mm -hmm. once and for all. Once he died, listen, because remember we said it before, like, man, I, it wouldn't be no animals left in this world. If people got serious about God and understood their sin, I'd be looking for everybody. I'd start offering ants on the altar. I kind of ran out of stuff because everybody using everything up. We don't got enough to eat and all of that, but just be like that system wasn't supposed to continue. That system was to be fulfilled in Christ, which is why we go back to what we were talking about earlier. Jesus said, I got to get baptized. I got to do everything that the law requires because I'm coming to fulfill the law, not get rid of it. I ain't coming to say that the law didn't matter. I'm saying the law matters so much and that you couldn't fulfill it and that law was going to condemn you forever that I have to come and meet its standards on both ends. I got to do everything it say you're supposed to do and I got to die the penalty as if I didn't do nothing. Thank you, God. And I'm doing both of these for you. Ooh. See, that'll make it fall in love. Yes. That'll make it, that'll make it, that'll make it fall down to do what he wants you to do. <laughs> Struggle and strain to be obedient to him, yes. not for earning sake, but for love's sake, not to get, it's because I already got. <laughs> See, then think about this. When you get your check, like, you work different when, when you got your money in your you, you, you work different. But when, when you when you like a couple weeks away, man, I don't feel like going up another day. <laughs> My money already low, I gotta wait two weeks for the check to come. And so when the money is flowing, you lie, I ain't really got a problem. I want this job. It's a good job. They pay you all time. <laughs> so God said, listen, I'm going to give you everything up front. Thank you, God. And say now, like, now follow me. You ain't got to earn your keep with me. You don't have to be good enough. You're going to fall down. I know it. That's going to always remind you, you need me. Amen. Your hope ain't in your performance. Amen. You're going to have some good days. Then Jesus is going to clap that up. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And then you're going to have some bad days. And Jesus is going to clap that up and say, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, God. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Jesus said, that's what I'm talking about when you're doing good. And he's going to say, that's what I'm talking about when you're doing bad. Because the main story he's pointing to is himself. This is why you need me both to be able to do good, and when you miss the mark, you need me just to say. He don't switch up. Never. 
That's a good place to have love. That's a secure love. It ain't a sometime -y love. That's a, that's a full-fledged, like, I love you because I love you. Not I love you because you did this or you didn't do that. Thank you. I love you because my love is already committed to being in love with you on your good days and your bad days. You know what that do? That make you be like, Thank you, Lord. Okay. Now, what you want me to do again? <laughs> I try. I, I go after that differently now. Thank you. When I can, when, listen, when I can taste that he is going to be with me, good days or bad. That's right. I go out of his presence into this world to try to let my light shine for him in a different way when it's not going to be based on how good I do today. Yes, God. That I, you know, that, you know, I don't have to, because just think about it. I said it before. Uh, <clears throat> Children who have been abused have a tough time with, with anybody. Listen to this, that's even trying to do them good. Yeah. They don't know when they're going to switch up on me. I, I, I can't read you. I don't know how to read real love. It always has taken advantage of me. It has always left me hanging in places. I don't, I don't trust nothing and nobody. I flinch when you're coming to give me a hug because I ain't yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jesus said, I got to love some of that out of you. I gotta let my love be there. Listen to this, especially when you fall. Because yeah. many of us don't know what to do when it ain't going well. Mm -hmm. We we used to success because we know how to be prideful and feel good because it's kind of like I did that. That's what I do. That's what that's who I am. We boast about that, but you don't hear me talking when I ain't done that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you you say Larry? Yeah. I'm going through it right now. <laughs> my mind is confused because who I think I am, I ain't able to be that right now. So I'm hiding out. Okay. You know, that's what happened in, I was just going to say, in the garden immediately, he knew, uh oh, I, I blew it. <laughs> he ran. But listen, God loves us so much, he'll say, where are you? <laughs> he know how to find you. You can't run away from, listen to this, he's the all-seeing one. Thank you, God. I remember one time I was going through some stuff, and I was, uh, you know, trying to be quiet on what God had been calling me to do. And, um, uh, you know, and I heard somebody over t having a conversation about how kids are when they know somebody ain't right. You know, this is some old, some old Southern people talking. They, you know, that baby won't go to him even though you know that man, he ain't right. <laughs> and I got put in a situation, I was sitting next to a kid in the worship service. And he looked at me, and he ran a little shitty cry. And immediately, my man I went to, I know I ain't right. <laughs> The kid that found me out. And God didn't let my mind just say, oh, that kid don't know what he's talking about. God took my mind to, nah, you, you heard me tell you what to do and you ain't doing it. And conviction set in and the baby don't know nothing. The mama don't know, but I'm having a conversation with God in my soul right now. Oh, the baby cried. See, God knows how to speak your language. He know how to get real with you. Because he said, I know where your heart is. You ain't going to let your heart run from me. I will find you out. And when I find you out, I am coming not even to condemn you. I do want to convict you. Though. I do want to make you feel some kind of way. Think about this. We, we, when we, when we um, shrink back from the call of God, when we push God away as if he's not necessary, just think, if you everything and somebody push you away like you nothing, Come on. you feel some yeah. kind of way. Yeah. And God is standing up and saying, you ain't finna make me feel funny. <laughs> you ain't feel funny before I feel funny. Because right. listen to this, you need me more than I need you. Thank you. So, so let me twist this thing up. Let me go, go here. Let me let you we gotta leave. I, I know, you gotta get the bag. It's all good. Bless, bless you. you. Glad, bless you. you. Glad to see you. God bless you. Yes, sir. Get done. Gotcha. Gotcha. I just have a little funny testimony about how the Lord showed up in my life many and plenty of times. But this one just really touched me when I really needed a breakthrough. And I was kind of feeling down in the dumps because I couldn't spend my income tax check on a vacation that I wanted to go to because I had visited Hawaii about 11 years ago with my family. And so I was having one of my mopey little old moments. And I was just looking at how God was working this moment maybe even 10 years or 12 years before I even had this moment when he gave my, when my mama was moving out and she gave me a palm tree. I planted that palm tree in front of my house on the porch 
and I was having some kind of little moment in my living room and I was moping and I don't ever get to go nowhere and talk to myself and say, gosh, God. And the Lord said like this, hello, Hawaii is on your porch. And I, <laughs> and I started crying. Amen. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. You brought it to my porch. <laughs> and I thought to myself, he was working this when my mama gave me that phone change 10 years ago. For this moment right. for me to be like, thank you, Lord. And he brought me to my knees and I even cried because I literally felt his presence yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> So he just shows right up. Perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. Without without taking you to Hawaii, school exactly. right where I go. Exactly. Be like, let me help you see Hawaii is right here. He's right here on the porch. And then palms are flourished, and I get compliments from people that walk by and say, wow, are there any bananas on that tree? <laughs> just think, you sat on your porch with that palm tree, which is something you see every day. It ain't something, yeah, something we rare. This is, not, this is normal, but you sat under that palm tree with a word from the Lord. That's right. 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 See, that's the, that's the passage we have. That, that I was moping. He yeah, he's like, hello, I'm right here. It's right here. See, in his presence, Amen. fullness of joy. Amen. At his right hand, I don't need Hawaii to be happy. I said it last week, there's going to be some places in this life I ain't going to ever go. People going to talk about the seven seas, the blue water, the, the, the Nile. I ain't going to ever go there. I ain't going to miss out on them as long as I got God. It would be great to go, but listen to this. Life ain't bad if I never make it. Amen. I, I have found my destination. Thank you, Lord. Listen to this. Jesus said, listen to this. Like that, you know, because we always are, um, life is a journey. Amen. It sure is. It is, it is. That's why the passage has said that the Psalm 16, you will show me the path of life. You will show me the way of life. Amen. Right? And remember what Jesus says, I am the way. Thank you. I'll just point you and go that way. No, listen. Yes. This is the way. Yes. Me. I'm the I am. I am not. And I go back now to so what you're talking about, why people use this religious approach to God. I am not a means to an end. Jesus said, listen, I am the end. It ain't nothing behind me. What you looking for back there? When you get me, you get everything that you need. It's right here. So don't be, you know, I mean, there, there's been times when, um, you know, you, you, you try to be a good parent and you know how to, you know, try to surprise your kids and... I remember there was a couple times when I came home from some trips and, you know, I had bought some gifts and, you know, and so my daughter got used to that. Daddy come home from a couple weeks away and <laughs> got gifts. There was a time I, I, I didn't get no gifts. I came in, I'm home, and she, she looking behind me, she touching my seat like, okay, you cool, but I know you got something about me. But look what Jesus said, like, am I not enough? satisfied yeah, yeah, yeah. with me. And so I just think that this is key. And so we are right now going to go back to this book passage in a minute where Jesus had just talked about him being the king and people have the kingdom confused because they think the kingdom is something that you can tangibly just grab right now. It looks in this physical world like something that meets a lot of my physical needs first. Jesus said your problem ain't physical stuff. <laughs> Your first problem is yeah. internal. That's right. Yeah, when I, listen, right. when I change your internal perspective, right. you don't need Hawaii now. Thank you, mm -hmm. Lord. <laughs> but, but, but if I come and just give you Hawaii, the oh. internal thing ain't been fixed. Because right. then you go, you ain't be satisfied with Hawaii. That's now right. you need something else. Because <laughs> now you think you a vacationer. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you think, you know, next year I'm, I'm at Antigua or somewhere. I'm going to Sam's Beach. But God, like, no, I don't need you to run around. Looking for happiness and joy. And he said, Listen, I ain't made in Hawaii. I made Hawaii. You might go there one day. But I do and I will fight for my rightful place in your life. Thank you, Jesus. I will frustrate you to bring you to happiness in me. Look at what the passage said. This is like, this is something serious. Jesus tells us, the psalmist wrote it in this way. He said, Delight yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Basically, let him be your desire. Jesus said this, love God with everything you got and love your neighbor like He didn't say nothing about us. Well, he didn't say love you like you want to be loved. <laughs> 
do for you like you feel you deserve to be done for. Spend your time falling in love with God and then let that love show something out of your life as you begin to love people because now Amen. I see what life is all about. I didn't got connected with the divine one and I understand, man, like we spending our time with stuff we don't need to and part of my love for you is to try to say something to help you see him. Yeah. To go out of our way. To yes. listen. Like, remember the opening passage we read was the guy sitting at his job minding his own business mm -hmm. and Jesus says, follow me. Mm -hmm. And the dude pack up and drop everything. And I said it last week, he didn't even talk to the boss. <laughs> he ain't gonna say, hey y'all, I'm, I'm gone. I, I need two weeks notice. You know, hold my job. I might be coming back. He left everything and not even really sure about where he was going. Remember, that's what happened with Abel. Yeah. Abel, you leave your family, your kindred, where you grew up, where everything is comfortable, and go to a place that I will show you. Yeah. I ain't even going to tell you where we headed. You're going to have to trust me. You're going to have to follow me. Let me be what your eyes need to be on. Not because if I tell you where, you can spin off on me. You can take a shortcut. You can be like, I'll meet you up there. Oh, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go over here, and then I'll meet you around the corner. He's like, no, you need to be step with me because it's not just about, and we said it before, it's not just about the destination. Yes. It's the journey. Amen. Because Jesus said, I am the destination. You're home yes. right now. That's, right. That's why Paul said, to live is Christ and die is God. He said, both of you are the same. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to close my eyes to this world and that which I had to live by faith with, mm -hmm. I'm going to see it in this reality. Amen. Joel said, I know my redeemer lives. Yes. Amen. And with my eyes, I'm going to behold him. I ain't, it ain't going to be foggy no more. Yes. I ain't going to be looking dimly through the glass and it's dark and I'm still trying to discern. We're going to be face to face. Yes. So he said, listen, I'm going, since I know that that's true on that side, I'm going to fight to live like that on this side. Yes. Jesus yes. is real. That's right. And the Holy Spirit has given witness. Remember, we wasn't there when he died at the cross. Yes. Wasn't there when he rose from the grave. But the Spirit of God has and is continuing to minister that to our hearts to where we live in this world as if that's a present reality. Mm -hmm. That Jesus ain't still in the grave, but I don't know where he went. No, he's on the throne. Yes, he is. All in Waiting the for the Father to say, go get him. Yes. And so we serve a risen Savior. Like he is alive and well. Yes. Still doing stuff in the world. Yes. Still telling people, you got a palm tree outside. He's still right. talking. Like, what? He ain't vanished. Right. Like, it ain't, like, I ain't trying to figure out God in my head. <laughs> This relationship is key. Let's go here. Go ahead. I just have to, I can't. I have to share this because yeah. um, thank you. Uh, my my name uh, means palm tree, and oh. I'm sitting here listening to her. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, because uh, the Lord can show up, and He speaks through so many different things. And I'm like in a journey. I'm in Arizona, away from my family, by myself uh -huh. there. And a lot of times, um, you know, when a lot of things aren't going right, but I can go outside and I look at the uh, at the mountains and I, I'm surrounded by all these palm trees and it's through these palm trees that the Lord has been keeping me and speaking to me through his beauty and Amen. she's sitting here saying that she's got this all palm tree <laughs> and I'm surrounded by all these palm trees but that's what has been keeping me and just Jesus. through him speaking to me through his beauty saying that I'm here with you when I look at the palm trees he, he uses that and says I'm here with you you know, so I, I had to share. Thank so God. You, yeah. you, you by yourself, but you ain't by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's perspective. Yes. Because I would get in my feelings, yeah. and I get the complaint, yeah. and the pity yeah. party, and all that yeah. happened, and I'm so far. And Some kind of way. Like, well, what if I needed you to be far away because I want to get closer with you? Right. Like, I want to show you some stuff, do some stuff out here. That's what he did with April. Let's go somewhere, man. Right. Let's take a journey because I can't talk to you because you're so comfortable. Right. Here that you'll miss a lot of our cue. Yes. But when I send you to a place where you ain't sure, you're gonna be listening to me. <laughs> Everything <laughs> gonna matter. <laughs>
relationship. So he's like, knock like you know I'm inside. Yeah. See, sometimes saying, I'm going to see how bad you want me. Yeah. I, I want to see what you'll go through. I went through some stuff to get you. Come on now. Yeah. And let me see that get reciprocated to where you feel like yeah. I can't make it without it. Remember, Amen. that's what we read last week. It was four cats carrying a paralyzed dude yes. to get to Jesus, and they said, we can't get in. The normal person would be like, man, we'll come back next week. <laughs> they was like, brother, you can't wait till next week. <laughs> I don't know who the house this is, but that roof is coming off today. <laughs> because you got to get to Jesus. This might be the moment. Listen. See, that's desperation. Amen. That's people who know he's the only hope you have. And we got to listen. I got to go out of my way to do what's necessary. See, that's somebody who knows Jesus is real. Amen. And I said it last week. At that moment, Jesus, who is the brain of the operation, and those four men who picture the body, the church, they were in unison. Jesus comes into the world going, I'm the hope of the world. You're going to live in darkness unless you come into the marvelous light of which I am. And those four men felt the same thing. They were in agreement with that Jesus, and they said, we got to get you to Jesus today. And the Bible says, when he saw their faith, he started talking to this guy and did something on his behalf because them cats believe me. I'm going to honor their faith. Yes. Who waiting on you to get real? Who, 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 who paralyzed stuck yeah. right there? <laughs> waiting on you to get woke to who you really are and who Jesus really is so you can act like he's the best thing. Amen. Mm. Jesus. And you know, it's, it's amazing how God works at you two sisters were saying. Just in the in the world that's insignificant, but in God is not. He takes so those it may get so huge. Yes. And the beauty, thank God for Pastor Larry for allowing the Holy Spirit Amen. to move. So if he would have went to this patch, if we would have said that, she would have said that, she would have, we wouldn't even got to that part of he's bringing confirmation and all he has to all kinds of things. And he says, stop looking for him. The world wants to say, I look for him and all this. He says, you don't need just in, just in little bitty things. I'm trying to talk to you and you can't even hear it. Because I'm trying to tell you. But just there, you acknowledge yeah. that it was him. And that in, well, what I understand too, what is not significant to others, God said, they don't mean that it's not it's that personal. Exactly. It is personal. Some stuff is just for you. So, you're going to tell somebody and they're going to look like, what? Okay. Yes, <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Yeah. You excited, you shared it, yeah. you sweating when you say it. Oh, okay, okay, that's cool. Right. But God, like, that was for you. Yes, Lord. That's right. That was for you. Because it, it, there's, see, that right there for you is going to yes. help you six months from now. Oh, yes. You're going to go, I'm putting a pen in that yes. as a marker. Yes. The six months from now, you're going to go through something. You're going to get weak in your faith. Ooh. And I'm going to come back to that. That was that. That wasn't just for you to go tell everybody. Yes. That was for you to be reminded that when you get in that rough patch, yes. he did it before. Yes. 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 That's, that's my my church coming right there. I just, he, yes. he may not come yes. in the morning. See, 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 I didn't understand it back then. <laughs> what they were saying and how they were saying, everybody. But when you go through some stuff, you're like, that's right. I've been in some spots. I was looking, I was looking for me. And I thought that was the moment. He said, it ain't desperate enough here. Oh, wow. See, listen, he said, I'm trying to paint a picture that I am the superhero. Remember Jesus? <laughs> Jesus um, heard Lazarus dead. Jesus, okay. <laughs> what y'all need to do today? <laughs> Stayed over here for three more days. And then he said, all right, I'm done. My friend Lazarus is asleep. I'm going to go wake him up. Yes. He said, he ain't, listen, he ain't dead enough yet. The despair on that end ain't set in deep yes, enough. The it. finality of death that's haven't it. gripped that's him yet. Because if I come too early, they won't get the magnitude. Get listen to this. Not just what happened, but who I am. Yes. So Jesus said, I want to wait till he all the way. They yeah. gave up hope. The funeral is over. The flowers <laughs> is over. The food, the repast has been done. Yeah, yeah. And they are moving on with life. And here I come. Ooh. And you heard the first word. One of the sisters said, if Jesus, if you would have came, he wouldn't have died. <laughs> Which really said, you're too late. Mm -hmm. I'm God, you're too late. Mm -hmm. The 
it's over now. If you would have been here a couple of days earlier, it would have been cool, but now it's like, forget it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You're talking to God, like the God who for him is nothing impossible. <laughs> and you have calculated him down to the human construct yes. to now box him into time and to say, you you too late. Man. When he say, I'm outside of time. Yes, I
Hebrews is a book that speaks about the excellency and the person of Christ. So right before we get there, I apologize. I'm going to ask a question. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, it's like I heard confirmation. Wow. Man.
is hanging in God's mouth. Mm -hmm. That he has mentioned on there by bread alone, by every word that proceeds Thank from you, the Jesus. mouth of God. Amen. So we are Hebrews chapter 1. Let's get this verse. We've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, somebody would mind reading verses 1 through uh, maybe 4. Hebrews chapter 1. We'll go with verse 1 through 4. In the past, God spoke through the prophets to our ancestors in many times and many ways. In these final days, though, he spoke to us through a son. Watch the stop for one second. Watch. So you see that God used certain people for a particular time. The law and the prophets. That's the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. God revealed himself through the Old Testament stories. The narrative of Israel with enslaved people journeying through the world. People bigger than them, more armies than them. But God kept his people through it all. And he also through the prophets, Thank those who Lord. stood up to Thank correct Lord. those people, Lord. tell those people you've been worshiping other things. God said, worship him only. And you've been tripping. He's about to send you into, listen to he's about to send you into chaos. <laughs> See, that's God fighting for his love. Thank you, God. You love something that I told you not to love. And I told you to be in love with me only. So I'm going to let life teach you that the stuff you're trying to love will not love you back. You done made all kind of leagues and plan <laughs> connections with these other people thinking they can save you from the drama. They actually gonna be the people who gonna bring drama. The people you thought would be your deliverance would be your oppression. I'm your deliverance. Right? So if God said, I'm not gonna let you have no other, that's the first commandment. You should have no other false gods. <laughs> Worship nobody but me. I'm God alone. And God says, I will uh, confront you on that. So he says, in the past times, I did it that way. But listen to this. There's a new time. And listen, I'll stop with that. That ain't the system no more. Don't look to the letters of the law no more. Don't look to the rules and regulations no more for the foundation. The foundation is going to come from that person. And now let's get verse number, uh, read, read verse 2 and let's keep going. In these final days, though, he spoke to us through a son. God made his son the heir of everything and created the world through him. The sun is the light of God's glory and the imprint of God's being. He maintains everything with his powerful message. After he carried out the cleansing of people from their sins, he sat down at the right side of the highest majesty. And the sun became so much greater than the other messengers, such as angels, that he received a more important title. That's your stuff. So you see what you, you see the weight that they put on Jesus? But I want you to notice something right quick. It said. <laughs> He is the radiance of the glory of God. He is the exact imprint of his nature. Looking at Jesus, remember Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Me and the Father is one. I came in human form to show you what he who is invisible looks like and what he feels about you. I came to put him on display. Right? And so he also says this. He is upholding the universe by the word of his power. Powerful words. Yep. That everything is held in alignment by what he has decreed it to be. And then he says, after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand. Now think about it. In his presence, fullness of joy. And at his right hand, pleasure. Just think about this. Jesus is the pleasure. He is the right, he is at the right hand. When you get to what, what, what does God have on his right hand? Jesus. <laughs> That's where the joy is. Jesus is that place where your ultimate, listen to this, your ultimate thirst and happiness is quenched in that place. Um, I love a cat, this cat named John Piper um, writes um, these, this book, he has several books, but he has this phrase he calls uh, Christian uh, hedonism. So hedonism is this thing about pleasure seeking, a person who's after pleasure. He says, what does it mean then for a Christian to be a hedonist, somebody who's always after pleasure, who is a person who's always after God. He said, let me take this negative term that we was yeah, making yeah. seem wrong to be a hedonist, because that means you always seek self-gratification, pleasure in things and places and great food and great wine and great art and great places to live, great neighborhoods, great, 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 great. <laughs> look at the great everywhere. <laughs> But just think about it. Jesus said, hold on a second. I know you're trying to find great out there, but listen to what the Bible says. Greater is he. Yes, <laughs> that's what a greatness oh, is in that relationship. Yes. In that revelation that's in your heart that God has clothed himself in Christ, came and lived and died on our behalf, and now it's calling us into union with him. It can't get no better than that. That's what pleasure is. And so he says, he is at the right hand of God. And
And so I just want to close with this. It says, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So he moves the whole rank of heavenly hosts. All the people who've done great things for God take a sideline seat to Jesus. Moses, slide on over, brother. <laughs> Abraham, he was great, but hold on a second. Oh, remember Jesus said before Abraham was, I, was. I am. <laughs> Don't get caught up in Abraham, man. He was a pointer to me. <laughs> Abraham had to believe just like you got to believe. I came to Abraham when he was a nobody. He didn't know nothing about me. And I told Abraham, come follow me. I'm going to take you somewhere. And that was the beginning of a faith journey. So, so, so let's just go back. I do want to close Romans. With Romans 10 still. Romans 10. So we just saw that Jesus is the exact imprint of God. He is God manifested in the flesh. He is 100% human because he has to live and die for us. He is 100% divine, which is why the grave could not keep him. God cannot die. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So we are now verse Number two, Paul had just said, I want my brothers, I want these religious people to actually be saved. I don't want them to just know scriptures. I want them to actually know Jesus. Did you hear that right quick? I don't want them to just know scriptures. I want them to know the one who the scriptures talk about. Remember, Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book. The whole book is written in me. They was using the scriptures to try to get Jesus out of the way. But Jesus said, I am the scriptures. The word became flesh. He said, if you really knew my father like you say you do, you would know who I am. But the way you acting proves you don't know my father. You actually, and look at this, is called talk. You a child of the devil. Jesus don't play though. So he don't play the little meat games. He, he not politically correct. Because he, he tests the borders of our heart because part of what he has to do is make us repent, make us humble ourselves. Remember, I said earlier, God ain't going to make us, make, uh, have him feeling funny by how we act. He said, you won't feel funny before me. So that's why he tested them. Remember, he showed one lady, he said, I can't give crumbs to dogs. <laughs> what should have offended a person. But she said, even the dog, even the dog, crumb from the table, which was to Jesus a sign of, listen, I'm nothing, you everything. Yes, Lord. See, if we can't get brought there, see, then what that does is it takes man off the high horse when they get that we equal. Because remember, that's what happened in the garden. Yeah. Satan said, well, when you eat this, you ain't going to need God like you needed him before. You will be like God, which means you independent, you free thinker, you determine good and evil on your own. You ain't got to wait on him. You ain't got to follow him around. You go make your own course in the world. And Jesus says, I got to come undo that core rebellion, which that's why the first work of the Holy Spirit is conviction, right? Yeah. He says, it's the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom to be like, hold on, God, and he ain't playing either. He want me, and he yeah. did this. He has threats if I don't hurt him. He says, I will have you or nobody else will have you. Listen, and it's best for you to side with me because I want to do you good. My plans for you is good plans. They ain't evil. But I got to talk to you this way because you are already set in rebellion and opposition to wanting my way. You think you can do it on your own. So I got to crush you, convict you to bring you to confess I've been wrong. I've been acting like you're not that important that you can, I can fit you into my life, but you actually are my life. I actually need you to leave God. I don't know what I'm doing down here. I've been waiting a lot of time. Please show me what, what to make up the rest of the days I do have. How to, how to redeem the time. Help me. So, I just wanted to know what conviction was. Conviction is it's that feeling when you feel strong about something. So that song we heard in the car, there was a conviction. Whether it was right or wrong, he felt a certain way. And so he's like, let me speak my mind. I ain't like trying to be in between. Conviction is an attitude that is of clarity. It is just yes. a heart conviction. Yes. So when I got convicted, so, so I go back to the example. <clears throat> the little baby started crying and ran away from me. It brought conviction. <laughs> the thing that I knew God was trying to tell me that I've been hiding, it was in the open now. I'm like, God, see me right now. He found me out. And then I immediately felt in my heart. Father, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. Right. Forgive me. I know you told me, and I'm running from the call you got for me. And, and, and so that's conviction, right? And so there's conviction that's negative.
that helps me get where God wants me to be. And then it's conviction to do what I'm doing now. Yes. I'm about your mission, God. I'll tell anybody. Now I got a different conviction. Thank you, to stand up and be all about his glory, Amen. not my own. So conviction can be both. Conviction hurts us. Yeah. And then it helps us. <laughs> Stop us from doing it all the way. It helps us do it his way. Conviction is what I felt tonight that kind of made me, you know, start crying because um, I've been kind of like half trying to see God, you know, like, okay, well, I'll pray and I'll do this and, you know, I'll so far fast, you know, but not really, not really, you know, all in, really see God and like put, you know, Put all of that other stuff to the side. And I just felt God super convicted me tonight. Thank you. Because Jesus. I know Amen. that Amen. I should be all in. That Amen. If I'm speaking this from Him and I, and I want this from Him, uh -huh. why not give my all? Yeah. Amen. 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 And it was just clear that, you know, I need to give my all. Yeah. Especially when I want something. Not necessarily want something in return, but I've been in this place where yeah. I feel like it's the next step. Like, <laughs> Lord, I've been here. I'm chilling. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm giving my life to you, but what's the next step? Yeah. But God ain't showing me the next yeah. step. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm at this place where I want to know, but tonight convicted me and showed me that I have to get in that place where I'm seeking and I'm yeah. I'm really asking, what's the next step? Show me the next step. Not just, Lord, I'm here, I'm chilling. What do you want me to do? It's like, you show me. Yeah. And I think that's where yeah. he convicted me tonight. Amen. Amen. And conviction is real. Yeah. I mean, yes. It, it's a good thing. Yeah. It, it's good, but then the feeling is, is kind of bad too because it makes you kind of feel. <laughs> A little bit of shame. Well, like shame shame of goes. Uh, Amen. Especially when you know. Yep. Uh, uh, <laughs> when you know that you should be doing something. It's a God reality God. check. It's like, oh. Yeah. Hey, you know. But I also, I feel like even co conviction to me equals um, conviction equals to me um uh, a feeling of gratitude. Yeah. Amen. And I would even convict me yeah. and, and show me yes. that, you know, Thank this you is what, even though this is what you're not doing, yes. I'm 